The following thoughts, opinions, stories, and expressions are meant for those who will appreciate them. If you don't, we hope you keep an open soul to encounter another here on 34 Questions. Peace. In three, two, one. What's going on, folks? Welcome to 34 Questions. I am your host, 34. And tonight, I have a very special guest. Jared Wilbraham is in the building. How are you doing tonight, Jared? I'm great, my man. Thanks for having me. This is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thank you again for, for coming through. I uh, definitely appreciate your time and your willingness to share your story. Uh, for the folks out there who don't know, this is the first time me and Jared are connecting. So, you know, uh, especially, especially appreciate the, the folks that I had no connection with to begin with coming on, coming through. Um, how you, How is uh, everything in where you're from right now? And where, where is it again exactly? Yeah, I'm in. I'm on the Gold Coast in Queensland, on the East Coast. So I got you. It's nice. It's just today's the first day I'm wearing a jumper and a beanie. It got quite quite cold. For real? <laughs> I don't know how the yeah, weather is out there, but <laughs> it's getting warm on this side uh, of the globe, bro. <laughs> I think we're the opposite. You know, you it gets warm over there, it gets cold over here. That's interesting. So if I ever plan yeah. my vacations, I should head out there in the winter time, I guess. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give it some thought. Uh, are you born and raised out there? Yeah, born and raised. I was from New South Wales, which is the state further south uh, originally, but I've moved up here onto the Gold Coast. I've been here for about two years and I've been living in a van for the last two years as well, trying to chase the dream of being a professional fighter. A, a professional fighter? Oh, shit. Yeah, a professional fighter. Yeah, mixed martial arts. I got you. I got you. We'll jump into that some more. Uh, but before we get there, I do have to let the folks out there who are unfamiliar with the flow of the show, we do some intro questions, some warm up questions just to set the tone. And then we'll jump into some, a couple icebreakers. Uh, after the icebreakers, uh, we'll get into the Wheel of Fate where we'll spin the wheel, whichever number it lands on. That's how the conversation will flow. Then after that, we'll finish it off with some closeout questions. Sound good to you, Jared? Sounds great. All right, man. Well, you were almost getting into it, so I had to pause and get back to it. But what, my first question is, what would you like the audience out there to know about you? Uh, I guess I'd like the audience, yeah, to know about me it would be a bit of my story. As in, I grew up in a town called Nara, but I was... I would say through my teens, I was like a troubled kid. And then I feel that I've come out the other side of it through pursuing martial arts, which I think's changed me as a person and given me direction and a goal in life. I got you. I got you. How long have you been uh, pursuing that? Uh, I've been competing for a bit over five years now, but I've been pursuing it full time for the last two years. For sure. Uh, you have how, how much do you feel like you've grown in those two years? Man, huge amount, huge amount. I think it's just a accumulation of just trying at things and failing and just learning how to get better and dealing with ad adversity over and over again. Kind of just feels like it shaped me into a better person and I'm able to deal with things better, more positive. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what level would you say you're at in your mind, like on, on your path? Would you say, are you past the first level still there or yeah, which level do you feel like you're at? The level, I would say that I'm, I'm on a scale of one to 10, I'm about an eight. I feel I'm at the top of the division in my country, but I feel that I need to, I just lost a fight last weekend against the number one guy. And, but I, I feel that I was up there with him. I need to go back to the, the drawing board. I know what I need to improve on. And I feel within a year, I'll be up there with uh, the best in the world. I mean, damn, man, doing, I feel like being at the level you're at now at, at eight in two years is a, uh, is huge. <laughs> so did you know how to, you know how to fight beforehand or is, you know, it was just new to you when you, when you started this journey? No, like growing up in the town I lived, I had a lot of run-ins with people. So fighting was something that I did regularly. Uh, it wasn't until I started competing in mixed martial arts that I actually started to get 
away from being in fights, but I had a lot of like enemies growing up and I've broken a lot of bones, a lot of injuries, a lot of hospital visits, but I'm glad to come out the other side and be doing it in competition. For sure, for sure. And I mean, you could have chosen different outlets, but why, why did you choose uh, MMA? I felt that fighting, I started to realize that maybe fighting was just the thing, like a karma that was always going to come around one way or another. It seemed to always find me. And I thought if I don't go and start competing professionally, I'm going to end up locked in jail for doing it. It wasn't necessarily that I enjoyed it going out and looking for it. It just found me over and over and over again. I just couldn't get away from the trouble in the town. It was revolved around drinking. Like I was a big drinker. I used to always go out and that's where the problems happened. So what martial arts got me away from being, would say I'd probably be an alcoholic by now if I didn't go down this path. I got you, man. I got you. Well, I'm, I'm definitely glad that you found a way um, to to get out of that lane. Um, I, I've seen some folks who've gone through it. And I mean, to a certain extent, I feel like I've gone through it as well. Um, not necessarily alcohol, but other things. And yeah, I have, it's definitely not a place that I would want people to be in. Um, so I'm glad for, that you, you found a way out. Uh, Thank you. My second question for you in the warm up is if there was a way I could express the energy you possess, what could I do? I think for me, it would be my willpower. I, I think that's the strongest characteristic I have my work ethic and my willpower. If I want something, I'm gonna give it 110% every single day until I achieve it. And if I fail, then at least I know I gave it my all. Do you feel like that was something you were born with or something that you kind of grew into, having that willpower? I think my dad was a big part of it. My dad taught me to have a really good work ethic. I was working on job sites as a young kid and all I ever wanted to do was make him proud by working hard and seeing the reaction on his face when I've gone and done a task that he maybe didn't think I was capable of. And that pushed me to further want to make my coach proud, my friends proud, my family proud, all the way through life. I got you. So when, you, when you're in the zone, um, and you don't got to give me all your secrets, but when, when you're in the zone, um, do does that support or that energy that you've always felt from those people you just mentioned kind of come through? Or is it a whole different thing for you? I think it's a whole different thing. And the zone is something that I'm tr still trying to find out about because like say the, the previous fight before this one, I went into it extremely calm and then I performed really well. This fight, I went into it even calmer and I don't think I found the zone. So I think it's different for each fight, diff different for each individual. I kind of have to analyze my opponent. And to be honest, I think it's, I need to just draw on this like, almost this dark side within myself and bring out the violent side of myself to get into that zone. No, I got you, I got you. That sounds pretty intense though. Uh, and I mean, I, I'm thinking that you probably have had situations when um, that side of you has come come out, but to able to uh, to tame it or to be able to control it, I think that's when you will probably reach the next level uh, for some mm -hmm. folks. Uh, is there any fighters that you look up to or kind of want to model your style after? Uh, or you do your I feel own like thing? I'm, Sorry. I feel like I really am designing my own sort of style backed by my coach and the people around me it seems to be different that i can't quite put a finger on it but when i look up to people i'll look up to people like alex volkanovsky who's australian featherweight champ and i used to train with him for a while and it was his work ethic and his kindness of who he was as a person that really made me want to be somebody like him i got you i got you and uh, in a nutshell, like you don't have to give me every single detail, but how often do you, you like are working out for, for this? <laughs> uh, how intense are your regiments? So six days a week, I'll train, um, sometimes up to six hours a day. I've been trying to cut back on how much I'm training. 
I ha- it's a very hard mental battle for me. It's it's how would I describe it? It's I almost I always feel like I'm not doing enough. When I made the decision to quit my job and train full time, I said to myself, I'm going to treat it like it's a job. And to me, that's putting in work hours into this sport. So out of maybe about three hard hours a day and the rest would be like technique. But mm. six, six days a week, I'm in the gym, in binding, MMA training with uh, grappling, strength and conditioning, wrestling. Like we have to try to put it all together to be a complete mixed martial artist where a boxer, he just focuses on boxing. So I'm trying to play catch up to all the people that are ahead of me in the rankings and I feel that I'm probably the least experienced so I know I have to put in five times the amount of work as what they are. No, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, this, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for you, bro. Like, you know, I hope, I hope you make it. Um, is, is there any, any place where we can kind of see the fights that you've already had? Yeah, so my last fight was on the UFC Fight Pass app. But my previous fight before that, you could catch that on uh, YouTube. It would just be under Jarrett Bulbraham and Eternal MMA. Okay, for sure. Uh, now now we know, and I'll definitely put it in the description and everything for any folks who want to check it out. Um, my last question for you in the warm-up is, how well do you know yourself on a scale from 1 to 10? I think probably an 8. I never used to know myself, that's for sure. I was hiding behind a false sense of who I was. It wasn't until I actually started to take um, psychedelics, magic mushrooms, not for recreational reasons, but I started to take them alone. And through that, I really seen who I had become of a person or the traits that I didn't like about myself. And I realized that that wasn't my fault, that I was that way. It was my life circumstances that had shaped me into this sort of person. And from that point on, I was able to take a step back, disassociate myself from those negative traits that I didn't like. And I was able to dig deeper into my soul and to find who I truly was as a person. So all the time, new things happen. I just tasted my first loss in a fight last week. Obviously, I'm learning even more about myself now. I was surprised with how well I took it. But it's like as time goes on, it starts to get harder and harder. And it's not the loss that I'm upset about. It's the fact that I didn't go out there and perform to the best of my abilities. So I feel like I've let down myself. But okay. I'm, learn- I'm learning how to deal with that. Is, um, were you undefeated before this last fight? Yeah, I was five wins and no losses in MMA Holy crap. and I was two kickboxing no losses in kickboxing damn man I mean uh, I'm kind of curious you could tell me if this is a you know you don't, something you don't want to talk about but would I have seen a different person today if you had won that fight versus how you're feeling now and you know the reflective phase you're probably going through yeah if you were talking to me today I would probably be thinking that I had all the tools and all the ability to go and become the number one guy in the world. But the guy that you're talking to today realizes that I'm far from that point and there's plenty of work that I need to go and put in. And now I'm taking the appropriate steps. So it's almost like we think we know who we are, but we don't until it's all stripped away from us. I got you. I got you. Thank you for sharing, man. And I know that's not easy to talk about. Um, what would you say was something surprising that you learned about yourself just throughout your life? If there's anything that was just like, oh, no, I didn't know that I had it in me. Or Yeah, I think it was actually my, my, my willpower that I was surprised about. I didn't know how bad I would have wanted to strive for something in my life, especially in sports. I was never great at any sport in particular and it wasn't until I started to get into mixed martial arts and started to have my first couple of fights that I started to realize that I was actually good at something and that gave me a whole purpose in my life for sure for sure man um we're gonna move on to the icebreakers but but before we do that uh 
I got I to gotta do that thing, man. I'm sure you do it on your podcast all the time. But uh, if you're liking the content, please like if you might, share if you care, to cr- subscribe for a vibe you didn't know was there. Uh, and then we zoom back out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Right on, man. I know it's that's the that's the first time too. I've tried I've tried that little image. Um, I'm sure that you can see the, the little error, but it's all good. We we roll with it. Um, all right, moving on to the icebreakers. Man, there you are. Uh, the first icebreaker is I'm calling it the point of view because I'm going to give you a statement, and I just like to get your point of view on it. Um, so this first statement is. Uh, Leaders can can let you fail, yet not let you be a failure. And that's a quote. Do you agree or disagree? Absolutely agree. Especially when I'm sorry to go back to the martial arts perspective again. But I'll go for like, it. Is, that's what our coaches are for. They want to see us fail all the time in the gym because for, through failure is where we grow when we try to fix the mistakes. So fa- failure is a good thing. For sure. Uh, how did you decide on a coach? Because I know that's that's a pretty strong bond, and you know you could you could have you could choose anyone. So how did you and your coach kind of find each other and you know create that bond? Yeah, I found my coach through fighters that have been through this gym before I was around. So I found my coach through one of the top ranked fighters in the world, and I thought if I fight anyone, it's going to be that sort of guy that's going to beat me. And obviously my coach now, when I moved up to train at the gym, he created that fighter. So he knows how to create the defense systems around working against that sort of fighter. So for me, it was the fighters that brought me to the gym. But from then it's been, uh, it's been a blessing working with my coach because he sees someone who like if I don't get something, I'll be in the gym till 10 o'clock at night drilling it over and over again until I get it. And I think that's a blessing for a coach to have someone who's really wants it that bad. And he's willing to just keep giving me information because he knows I want to use it and I trust him and he trusts me. For sure. For sure. It's important to to feel that way about your coaches. I know like uh, I can't com- really compare it because I, I feel like the relationship between a sport like yours where I think it's a one-on-one I've only been part of team sports so I feel like I've had more of a, a manager you know like trying to um, cater to everyone's needs but I feel like with a coach you guys just kind of know the ins and, out, ins and outs and the abilities um, so that's a great relationship to have my second statement I'm going to throw at you is overthinking is a bad thing. True or false? Oh, I would probably say false. Mm. Uh, yeah, because I'm an overthinker and what I think at the current time is never going to be what the reality of it is. The more I sit there and ponder and start to go down the rabbit hole about thinking about a certain topic, I'll start to really understand the ins and outs of it. I feel you. I feel you. Uh, do you think that like you've been an overthinker your whole life or was that also something you grew into? No, I think I've always been a deep thinker. I like to go extremely deep with my thought so much that I don't really talk to a lot of people about the way that I think because I can just like legitimately drive people insane. <laughs> <laughs> like shatter their reality or something like that they giving i'm always trying to find new perspectives throw new perspectives out there different ways to look at things from all different angles because i know that my outlook on what something is is based purely on the way that my ego works Mm, yeah i got you man and how like i i am definitely trying to work on my relationship with my ego you feel like you have a healthy one with your ego yeah, it's it's almost like something that has to constantly be tamed, I think. Something that you always have to come back and check in on because it's so easy to lose touch with our reality and to start thinking from a place of ego. So it's something that you I feel I always have to be keeping in check. Like I'm a I don't know if you believe in astrology, but like I'm a Leo, like a typical Leo which is a big ego and I know that if I keep that under wraps I can be a 
good person. On the other side of things, if I become the negative side of Leo, like I could become a really big asshole to people. I could probably be a trash talking fighter or something like that. Um, that's not the guy that I want to be, but the ability to be that guy is like just under the surface. Mm, I got you. Uh, man, I had another question, but it, oh, actually, so doing psychedelics, uh, I've done my share as well. Uh, and I think that's when I really started separating my ego from myself um, or my soul from my ego. Maybe that's the terminology I want to use. But yeah, I would say my first trip was the one that kind of introduced me to that. And I, I just enjoyed it. And I think I've gotten to the point where I've done like psychedelics enough where um, I can keep that at bay. And I haven't done it in a while. So for you, is it still something that you like try every once in a while or it hasn't been something where you did it and then you're, you've kind of moved on from it uh, i guess you would know it's almost like do you, do you feel at times it's calls on you you're like i haven't done it in a while i feel, feel that i need to yeah yeah no, like <laughs> i know for me it's when it's like a you know maybe a camping trip or something and someone's like oh i got some and i'm like oh it found me this time it wasn't i was like good looking for it right and yes in those situations i'll definitely partake <laughs> Yeah. yeah the this last fight was the first fight that i haven't taken psychedelics before the fight to try to analyze what i need to do and i went out there and performed like crap mm, i see and like do you think are, are you thinking that it's a like a real effect on on the fight and on, on how you performed yeah uh well geez i've had some weird experiences i've had times when i've gone and um had mushrooms and it's explained what I needed to do and what was going to happen during the fight and it played out exactly as I had seen it. I was yeah. well aware. Yeah, man, crazy. Even to the point where I had taken it and it told me that I was going to beat this guy and he was going to retire to spend time with his kids. And I didn't know anything about this guy and his family. And then just before I walked out, my coach told me this is going to be uh, this bloke's last fight maybe if he loses i said why is that and he goes he's gonna go spend time with his kids <laughs> yeah. yeah the hairs on the back of my neck stood up and i walked out and i said i'd already already won and both things that i pictured during that fight happened exactly how it was i caught him in the middle of him striking just as i pictured and broke his nose and then when i got him on the ground and he covered up it explained for me to just keep elbowing through his guard and eventually I'd break through and finish him and that's exactly what happened. I gotcha. Holy crap. Sometimes it's just it's sometimes it's just the men mentality of how I have to approach the fight. Like it takes the anxiety away. Like I went into one of them just completely calm. It was saying, Don't worry about the outcome. Just focus on what you've got to do. Don't worry about what he's going to do. That's all the message was for that fight. And I went in there and just executed it perfectly. I got you. Well, which, which fight would you say is your best fight? And what made that the best? Yeah, I would say the not my last fight, but the one before that. So my fifth win. I would say that was it because I just went in there so cool and calm and calculated and I finished the guy who was a brown belt in jiu-jitsu just went onto his black belt I ended up beating him at his own game on the ground yeah I got you I'm gonna have to check that out on YouTube after this yeah uh, and then I'm gonna move on to our second icebreaker which is word for word I'm gonna throw a word at you you just give me the first thought or first word that comes to you and you're going to try to get this as many as you can in 34 seconds. Um, and I don't have my timer, but just trust me and anyone watching, listen and trust me as well as 34 <laughs> seconds. Here we go. In three, two, one. Crazy. Definition. Failure. A reason to succeed. Success. Achievement. Art. Expression. Food. Love, hate. Pain. Anything hard. Regret. Something in the past. Culture. Uh, us as a whole. Dope. 
<laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Uh, let me ask you about. You said food, love, and hate. Like, why, why, why do you say that for food? Oh, like I'm a 61 kilogram fighter, right? And I'm like, like five foot eleven. I'm fairly tall and I'm fairly thin. I'm fairly skinny, but I be, I diet so often for fights that. Uh, I'm constantly looking at the mirror at my body, hoping to see the person that's close to weight. Mm -hmm. And it's not a normal weight for somebody to be at. I'm like 4% body fat. But now every time I eat food during camp, I go and look in the mirror at my stomach. And it's a strange thing. I've grown up with someone in my family who has an eating disorder and I've always tried to snap them out of it. I thought I'd be the last person to develop one. But now I really have a bad relationship with food that I can't help. It's a mental thing. And now I walk around at a healthy weight of about 70 kilos. I can't help but to just think that I'm overweight when I'm nowhere near overweight. I'm just, but I am 10, nearly 10 kilos off my competition weight. Mm. Dude, I 100% I uh, relate with you just because uh, when I was younger, and I'm going to have to see the difference between 70 uh it was kilos or? yeah kilos yeah kilos and because i don't know you probably know the the conversion but better than i yeah, do yes so 70 kilos 155 pounds got you and then you were down at like one like 140 pounds 130 135 at five, a, like 11. a week ago yeah yeah holy crap yeah. a week ago a week ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Okay. okay. I, I was he I was heavier than that, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I was up to uh, so I was probably up to 160 pounds within a week. The 135 to yeah, it was like nearly 30 pounds that I'd put on in a week. And I mean, I can only imagine, you know, training six days a week, almost six hours a day. That that's where how. How it can fluctuate as much? Yeah, it's all fluid manipulation. So we ma manipulate fluid out of our body. We cut carbohydrates out of our body that hold fluid. We cut sodium out of our body that holds fluid. And we drop a lot of water through like a lo water loading technique when we drink a lot of water and then we cut the water down and we keep urinating. And then the last like three or four kilos is spent in a bathtub in and wrapping in hot towels sweating it out so the weight on the scales is not realistic at all yeah yeah i got you and i, I i'm guessing this is you're not the only one doing this so wow that's we're all doing it we yeah, all do it that's fucking crazy man um yeah, it's not yeah i mean as far as the body image goes it's something i'm struggling with too i, I grew up a big kid my the highest I, I would weigh was like 280 pounds uh, so it was a lot for someone 5'9 um, and then I lost like 100 pounds in college uh, but even now like when I am like trying to feel like I'm normal like just recently me and my coworker just talked about this but like our clothes are fitting a little tighter and it's like god damn like <laughs> I feel like you know you, you work so hard and you know you try to get to this point where you're content um and then all of a sudden you're too content and you're, you're too comfortable and you gotta like kick your ass back into gear uh, yeah i don't and a lot of people that know me are like oh you, you look fine you have nothing to worry about but in my mind i still see that fat kid you know that was mm -hmm. like 280 so it, it that's how it fucks with me to be honest but yeah i just want to say like that's amazing the amount of weight you lost like i don't think people understand what that takes the discipline the time the effort and especially if you i, I look at it like i'm a uh, i'm a fairly lean person already so it doesn't take me too long to get down to my weight but if a, a, a larger person did that over a longer period of time you would look in the mirror and not really see the results that you want to see it's such a long term process and it would almost make the make anyone want to just give up so anybody that loses large amounts of weight to me is the most amazing thing i always said one day if i ever made it 
and become extremely rich. If I ever am driving down the road, I'll keep in the trunk of my car all this workout gear. If I ever see somebody out there trying to lose weight on the side of the road, I'll pull over and be like, here you go, here's $2,000 worth of workout gear and a free gym membership. Because it's the most inspiring thing to me is when people want to make a, a lifestyle change. Yeah, man, for sure. And, you know, I when I was going through it, I didn't think too much of it. But when, I, especially when I see folks now, I'm the kind of dude who sees someone running and be like, keep going. Just yell, yell outside of the car, you know, uh, just because I... I think people who go through that journey understand like what it takes um and you know it's crazy for me i think it was a time where i moved away from home i was in college alone didn't know folks down there so loneliness and you know just kind of trying to figure out where i belong kind of pushed me towards the gym and i was in there all the time until i finally like was able to settle down find find friends and everything but it's crazy what those moments in your life can do to you right like when you feel uh, some kind of pressure and anxiety um, so yeah that, that's that's just my side of the story but definitely appreciate the kind words and yeah anybody out there who's working hard on improving yourself keep going you know keep grinding and don't stop uh, all right man well we made it to the portion where we turn to the wheel of fate of the podcast and uh you know like i said i'm always trying new things uh <laughs> I got to make sure this transitions out perfectly. There we go. And then I'm going to throw the wheel up. There it goes. Uh, So (laughs) uh, here we go. Give it a spin. See where it lands. Aim up on number 26. Here we go. And uh, just a reminder, if there's any question you don't want to talk about or goes too deep, feel free to pass. There's absolutely no pressure. So number 26 is how would you have raised yourself? I would have raised myself in a tough manner, uh, disciplined manner. I would have forced myself to make my bed, do all the things that I didn't want to do in order to do the things I did want to do. I would have raised me on the weekends to work hard and I would have paid me money to show that hard work pays off over the long term and I feel that would have instilled further reasons for me to find that through hardship comes accomplishment I gotcha well, would you have like knowing yourself would, would you have been the kind of kid to accept that or would you have rebelled a little bit Oh, no, well, in hindsight, if you go back, I probably would have beaten the little <laughs> living shit, shit out of me. <laughs> I was right. a bad kid, man. I was like one of those kids. I was told I had ADHD. My mum refused to put me on medication. Mm-hmm. They wanted me on like a, like, I don't know if you've seen kids that are on a lead. No, Because no. they run it. Like they have like backpacks where they you hook like a strap onto the kid's oh, back. So you, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking I, about. <laughs> yeah. I would take off in supermarkets and like start to belt other kids for no reason. Like I was really, really, really bad kid. They didn't think I was going to snap out of it, but I I snapped out of it coming into primary school. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I would just discipline, you know, I don't know how my parents did it, but kudos to them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a... That extra power they got for being parents. <laughs> uh, I work yeah. with I work with kids um, with high schoolers. I guess that's secondary school out there for you guys. Um, and yeah, it's it's just interesting because I know they don't they don't see me as an authority figure, which I appreciate. Um, and I don't want to be an authority figure because they are some badass kids sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was getting into yeah. fights, but uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, all right, for sure, and. Uh, well, now, would you have still wanted that as you became like teenage years, uh, some like a disciplinary kind of uh, vibe? Yeah, there had to be some sort of discipline there, I feel. I, yeah, I would have benefited from it a lot. I had to make a lot of mistakes in my life and I learned from those mistakes, but I made them over and over and over again. And I don't think there's anything anyone could have really done 
but it, like I went through a, my parents went through a divorce when I was a young kid. Things were pretty messy. It's hard to raise kids the way you want to raise them when you got all these external factors around you, and it's just tough. I don't know. Like I think if I got into martial arts at a young age, which my mum tried to put me in karate when I was like six years old, I didn't want to do it. I think my life would be completely different again. I wouldn't have made all those mistakes. So I think that anything hard is just really good for us. I don't know. Do you do you have wrestling over there in schools? Uh, wrestling, we I know some schools do, but not not in my district. I want to say my district we don't we don't have wrestling like that. Uh, but yeah, well, what about it? I just think that that's so beneficial because. The problem I found with people and especially men in pubs is that they think they're 10 foot tall and bulletproof all the time and they just want to prove something. If you get on the wrestling mat, it'll prove to you pretty quick that there's always going to be someone out there that's going to flatten you pretty quick. So yeah. wrestling's like, it's hard and it's painful and it hurts and there's injuries. You got to sit on the sideline sometimes and just, but you got to be there for your team. and. Everything about wrestling, I feel they should bring back to schools and it would get a, a rid of a lot of, say, the what they call toxic masculinity. Mm, yeah. I uh, I think the, the big push out here, and it's weird because um, it's, it's summertime, so our school year just ended. But next year, I'm thinking about doing something like that and I'm pushing boxing. Um, just because it's, you know, it's, I guess it's not as dangerous <laughs> uh, as getting on the floor. You know, if you just throw in your fist, I guess it is still dangerous because you're hitting your head. But um, yeah, I got to think about how I'm going to sell that to, to parents and teachers and whatnot. But um, yeah, there's got to be something because these kids are pretty aggressive right now. Uh, coming back from quarantine and COVID, like acting like they haven't been around people <laughs> and a lot of trying to prove stuff to each other. Uh, is, is what I've been seeing so yeah. yeah it's the hard thing is you want to teach them martial arts but then you don't know if you can trust that they're not going to go out there and use it on somebody else uh, but I think that the thing about wrestling is that what are they going to do ta tackle somebody to the ground I guess it's not as <laughs> bad as like going up behind someone and punching them in the back of the head that's true that's true uh, I gotta figure out why wrestling ain't a thing and, and see if we could bring it back um, <laughs> I mean I think I don't know maybe kids just don't like uh, the contact anymore I, I, I found that a lot of my aggressive friends going into the 30s and a little bit older a lot of them are going to do jujitsu you know like instead of yeah, fighting yeah. Uh, so yeah it's and I, I remember I went on a free trial tried it out one day um, the, I don't think I was good at it, but it was my first time, so I guess you can't really be good at it because I was definitely getting my ass kicked all day. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't be good at it the first time. It's almost every body mechanic that you understand, you have to do the opposite of that and you have to completely rewire your brain to do jujitsu because our, like, say, if somebody's trying to climb on our back, our tendency is to turn the other way and give our back and try to run. Where in jiu-jitsu, it's about turning back in and stopping them from getting around onto your back. So it's all the opposite of what you what you would naturally do. Yeah. The strange thing is you, you watch like two cats or two dogs mm -hmm. wrestle and they actually turn in like, like jiu-jitsu. Where humans, for some reason, we do the opposite thing. We turn away, give up our back. Mm, and yeah. It's strange i got i gotta pay attention more but yeah i remember them that was how it was explained to me before i did a free trial was like you know just just remember that you're gonna feel awkward you're gonna feel like you're doing the wrong thing um but yeah it was an experience for anyone who's never tried it i highly encourage you know just giving it do the, do the free trial um and don't get discouraged they should do a week trial because then i would have been like oh, okay maybe i could come back and <laughs> gain some confidence after yeah, no know, one enjoys the first day <laughs> <laughs> uh all right man we're gonna give the wheel another spin here we go oh let me ask you how did you find out about the show was it through uh reddit it might have been through Reddit. I just like to go through there and see other podcasts and see what they're about. And mm. when I found yours, 
uh, you have the same goal in mind as myself. I and I love you. hearing from other people. I think people out there have a lot to offer. A lot of times podcasts, they only want to interview people that have made it successful in as a celebrity or an influencer or a sports person. But for me, I want to be able to shine some light and give time to those people that are just average people that have learned a lot in life. I hear you, man. I hear you. Yeah, like it's uh, maybe it's because of the psychedelics. <laughs> But, uh, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it's definitely still important that we do the work that we do. And it is cool for you because you're still doing your dream and you're just adding in this other part of your uh, other part to your life. That's just, you know, giving more to other folks. And I think that's a beautiful thing, man. And I think more folks are, are looking for that, that kind of flow, that kind of balance. Um, so anyone watching, I hope you find that for yourself. Uh so it was number 23 that the wheel landed on. Uh, this one is, what makes you feel vulnerable? Mm. Yeah, so the things that make me feel vulnerable is I, in my life I had to come to a stage and a realization that I didn't like the person that I was. And I feel that when I started to undo a heap of that, I become extremely vulnerable. I had to put my feelings out there. I had to show a weaker side of me. And it's a hard thing for people to do. And it was an extremely hard thing for me to do. There was a lot of, yeah, emotional maturity I had to go through. I had to let down the, say, false, uh, mask I was wearing of being an extremely tough person and it wasn't really until I started to compete and fight professionally that I wanted to be able to talk about that and help other people because I feel that I don't need to do anything else to prove that I'm a man in a sense I do a sport that is extremely violent and masculine but me as a person I feel I'm actually become quite the opposite of that I'm more in tune with my emotions. I'm more in tune with, say, the feminine side of myself. And in order to admit that and to do that, you have to be extremely vulnerable. I yeah. got you. What would you say was your your reason for your tough exterior beforehand? Like, what made you feel like you had to make those walls or build that armor? Through. At the beginning, for me, it was about I was getting bullied and it was like over and over again, I was in fight after fight. But eventually I earned a really bad name for myself where I lived and people would see me and realize who I was and they would want to fight me for no reason other than the fact I had a bad name for myself. So I realized pretty quick that if I looked timid to people or tried to walk away from trouble, they would follow me and hound me like wolves and eventually they would get me in a, a, a place where I was vulnerable leaving the pub. So instead I almost become paranoid. If I walked past somebody and they looked at me in a way that I felt that they knew who I was and they had a, a problem with me, I would walk straight up to them and confront them. So I had to walk around with this like shitty look on my face and I feel like it started to change my facial features. My mum even started to say, you just look like you're hardened. You just look like so angry. And it was a, uh, it was a way that my, f my face was like changing. And I stopped, I, st I stopped looking like such of a, a kid. I still look like a kid, but there's a big change in my facial structure during that time. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, thank you for, for sharing. Um, and I mean, I just got lost in your answer. I had another question for you, but that was just too deep, bro. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I mean, you know, what's interesting is that we've had two different approaches to getting bullied, you know, and it could be genes. It could just be the environments that we were we grew up in. I remember when I was getting bullied because I was a chubby kid. Uh, that's why I was bullied. Um, but I, I remember just trying to tune it out, you know, like my folks were very passive folks. So they're like, you know, don't fight back. Just tell the teacher. I, I didn't want to tell the teacher, but I also didn't want to fight back. So I just basically took it. I, I would sit down, 
cross-legged and meditate even though i didn't know what meditation meant but it was just my way of tell- showing folks that like i'm not giving this any more attention than i should uh so i'm just gonna meditate and that kind of did the trick um of course that made me seem weird too so i got bullied for that as well in a different way but it was it was definitely interesting the different approaches and looking back on it for me like i wish i took a swing a a swing at at some point uh just to know how that felt defending myself i've defended others i fought for others but i never really like did that for myself so i don't know maybe the time's coming for me uh, I just don't want to get arrested now. I feel like when you get in fights as kids, it's not as a big a deal. <laughs> but then when you're an adult, yeah. they can sue your ass. So <laughs> I'm trying to figure that who out. Who knows, man? Like, who knows? Because if you look at the results of me defending myself, resulted in like me breaking my nose three times. I broke my jaw. I broke my orbital bone. I've broken ribs. I've broken knuckles. I probably could have avoided it all by just like completely running away from all of it. And who knows, I probably wouldn't be a fighter. Maybe I would be doing something else with my life, but I say it over and over again, like fighting's a curse. It's something I need to do now. It's something that once it's ingrained inside of you, you can't get away from it. It's literally like a a curse. Yeah, man. I I hope it doesn't like you know continue to grow on you in that way i mean i I think for you it's a gift um and but i i definitely understand the curse part uh but even with that mindset that might be the very thing that like pushes you past everybody else you know Uh, people who might not think it's a curse uh so yeah like you know i don't want to tell you how to think um but just know that i believe it's probably a little bit of both a gift and a curse uh yeah it's a love-hate relationship that's for sure sometimes you're like what am what are you doing to yourself when you're mm. sitting in a bath cutting the last three kilos to be at a weight that you were the last time you weighed that much you were like 15 years old it's like what are you doing yeah but it's uh, it's something i love and it's un- it's like anything that's hard the process is going to be uncomfortable but the results that you gain from it are going to be beneficial so there's the curse side which is the hard work that you put in the injuries and and the you know the diet your hormones play tricks on you when you're dieting for so long but in the end when you win when you achieve and when you the people around you start to make choices in their life of the, pursuing the things that they want to pursue because they've seen you do it that's what makes it all worth it I got you. I got you. I, th- I think that's true. Um, it's that effect that you have just by doing your best and what you want. Um, but people get inspired, man. And I feel like I'm inspired by folks all the time that I see doing their thing. So I hear you. Uh, I think we got time for one more spin. So let me pull up the wheel one more time. Let's see, you got number seven and number seven is what's the toughest thing to admit about yourself toughest thing to admit about myself yeah would definitely say that i like i wasn't a good person Mm -hmm. i really wasn't a good person i wasn't proud of myself even when I started to become a better person, I almost became a worse person, as weird as that sounds. But I realized how shitty I was as a person mm-hmm. and I started to become almost like I got right into spirituality and through spirituality, I tried to prove to everybody how good and how great of a person I was and how he, like I'd changed and I pushed it on the people a lot. And for that, I'm not proud of. I was never being myself. It took me a long time to actually be myself. So a lot of people will know me as a person that went and made a lot of mistakes in life, a violent person, maybe a drunk, idiotic, rude person. And other people would probably know me from a point of me flexing my ego around. And to, for me to sit here and admit that is a pretty difficult thing because I'd rather just 
hide from it all and pretend that none of that existed, but it did. You think, uh, have, I don't know if you've done this, maybe you don't feel like you need to. Uh, have you ever tried to look for forgiveness to, for, from people that you maybe took it too far with? Or? The thing is, I, I feel that I've, I don't, everyone that I've been in fights with in the past, I feel I'm, a, I'm at peace with all those people. I don't think there's any of them that I will see them down the street and not say hello to or want to have a conversation with. I got you. Yeah, that's that, that's pretty dope. Go ahead. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to for me to go out and uh, ask for forgiveness. I think the forgiveness I feel that I ask for is from everyone who is just around me. And if I say that, they'll be like, "Oh, don't be stupid. You're just being hard on yourself." And maybe mm. I am. Maybe it's the person that I need forgiveness from is just myself. And that seems to come up a lot when I've taken mushrooms. No, oh, for sure, for sure, man. Um, I think when one of the re- revelations I came up, came up with uh, doing mushrooms was, uh, why does it matter, or why do you care so much? Um, you know, it it always gives me that bigger picture of just like, you're right. I'm like, you know, one person in this big ass what like universe, world, life experience. Um, you know how I'm feeling about things isn't really like I can't even say it's the real thing right like <laughs> so yeah it, it definitely keeps me humble keeps me grounded um <laughs> yeah I, I love that it's almost like you know I, I talk about wanting people's forgiveness the mushrooms will be like are you serious man that's just your <laughs> ego again why does anyone care <laughs> absolutely <laughs> That should be a comic strip, man. Once once shrooms become legal and stuff, I can definitely see how the comic strips about like a conversation with mushrooms, man. <laughs> That's gonna be great. Um, yeah, I always this happens to me all the time where like I'll have a question because you said something in your answer. Uh, it happened again, and I'm, I just apologize. I apologize to the folks out there too. I need to be on my A game, um, but. We'll be moving on to the closeout questions. But before we do that, uh, I want you to partake in this exercise called the 34th Mantra. I'm going to flip you on to the next screen. And I want you to fill out this phrase. I am, I can, I will. I am blank, I can blank, I will blank. Um, and let me know when you're ready because I'll throw you on there. So we don't got to be on there for too long. <laughs> All right, let's do it. All right. Um, Go for it. I am who I am. I can achieve all that I want and I will be victorious. For sure, man. Now you have yourself a little bit of a reminder. Uh, If you happen to forget, you could always look back at this interview and that's you talking to you, man. So, uh, thank you, man. I love that you do this. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Uh, gonna turn over to the question slide as i'm doing this and thank you for for work, work helping me work out these kinks and stuff because uh i'm trying to i'm thinking to myself is this too many screen changes right now <laughs> but uh man. no i like the screen change i think it's great all right for sure well i appreciate that um gonna give you <laughs> just curious this uh this next question is from my previous guest uh, shout out to Rocky G and uh, he's very like culturally aware um, he's Filipino so his question for you is uh, the Filipino election just happened in the Philippines and have you heard anything about it uh, I think he was just wondering if like other uh, countries had any like you know insight on the news of what's happening in the Philippines and why it's such a big deal I actually haven't, but you know, I I live in a van, and the best thing about the van, it may be the best or the worst, is I don't get like news. Mm, yeah. Sometimes it can be a very negative thing, the news. But I also like to be aware of what's going on. Yeah. In uh, other countries, by memory, I think do they have did they have some sort of like government overthrow happening over there? No government overthrow, and I, but I think there's always re- rebellion groups. And this, like, I don't want to 
put it out of context just because I'm not as culturally aware as this dude Rocky G is uh, and for any people in the Philippines who listen to this and they're like oh he's talking some bad shit uh, from my understanding there is uh, basically someone who came into power after a bad uh, bad uh, dictatorship beforehand and then now is this new person who is part of this family who had run the was president before like their grandparents or something was a president before they stole hella money and like billions of dollars that were was supposed to be help like help for the filipinos and in, in the philippines uh they basically you know found their ways to finesse it left the country after the presidency ended um but they did martial law which was basically like anything we say you have to do or else you're arrested or uh you know and it was a lot of crazy time and that family just got back into power um everyone's going like how what happened and i just know that i don't, th I don't think this is a secret or anything but you know there's a lot of corrupt corruption in politics uh and i think the philippines got it got it got it bad um and i'm pretty sure there's other countries that have it worse it's just that right now and it's my people it's my motherland and i feel some type of way about it but yeah that's what's been happening man um it's sad it's yeah something that seems to happen all over the globe but my perspective on it is the people that end up in power aren't going to be the ones that you may want them to be but the ones that you do want to be in power are probably not never going to get to a position where they will be elected in i mean uh, well, why is that why, why, why would you say that because i've heard it before but yeah from your perspective i think it just starts so deep on first off you have to go to certain universities and certain universities align with certain belief structures certain opinions and when you want to work your way to the top you need to align your belief with those above you mm. those that have this common belief are added into the say mutual government parties those that have a different belief are usually cast out into minority parties that are never going to get voted in i think over here in australia how it works is it's people are unaware of how your vote works so you vote for you're like you got five votes and you'll vote for like three minority parties and then they'll make you vote for one of the major ones at the bottom if those mi minority parties don't get voted in which they're not going to your vote will just trickle down and go to the next mm. big dog party down the i'm pretty sure that's how it works so people aren't aware of that and they're like they get to the bottom of the form and just be like oh i'll vote labor and then the vote goes to them and then they get elected in you're unaware who you even voted for that is crazy man and uh, yeah that that's definitely damn i could definitely do a do some episodes on different countries politics because <laughs> that's that's something that I, that would sound crazy to me but i'm pretty sure if you heard a lot of stuff about american politics you'd be like you guys do that over there so yeah i think <laughs> whoever's in power is just you know form, forming the game uh, for for themselves which sucks for sure yeah they need to align with corporations too because who's funding their campaigns it's all the corporations yeah yeah no doubt and that's the frustrating thing for me i don't like i'm not a political person uh what's great about our forums out here there's a little bubble that says independent um which is <laughs> how i i identify myself on those ballots um but yeah it's it's interesting because as much change as like the regular joe like myself would want um we can't seem to agree on a lot of things enough for a change to happen not right now um and i don't know man like it's great you don't have to follow the news uh and that's why i'm so culturally unaware of what's happening in the philippines because I, I try not to follow the news as, as much as well uh, just because the, i don't know if you feel this way but that stuff is out of my control and if i continue to pay attention to it and like give it a lot of time then i just it affects me in a way i don't want it to affect me um some people might say i'm just trying to avoid reality but i think you know in what i can see for myself maybe that is my reality and i'm just trying to better that and better the people around it as much as i can uh but yeah, yeah. 
I feel you, man. It's like, even if you do want to look into what's going on over there, you better be careful where you're getting your information from because all the news out there is just, des it's designed to play us against the opposite party. So it's almost like, all right, you have a belief in life. Well, what side are you on? You're on the left, are you on the right? You know, and then we're going to play those two people's opinions against each other. And then it, when you when you pick a political party, no matter what, like uh, us as humans, we don't have the ability to be like, oh, I'm wrong. It's like once we choose a, a team, whether it's a sporting team, we're like, we're the best. We're <laughs> going to stick it out. You know, yeah. we're not going to jump sides. We're not going to change teams. And it, they true. bring they bring race into it, and they bring a lot of horrible things into it where it actually makes us look look at each other different. We may not strike up a conversation with somebody because of something we've seen on the news that day that was about race. And I think that's just a terrible thing. Yeah. And he even just like, just change the way we interact with people, right? It's because like, oh, this person probably seen the news too. Uh, you know, maybe there's like some kind of judgment that's happening at this moment and it happens both ways and, you know, things just get complicated. Things get tense and complicated. Um, they do. But yeah, I hear you, bro. Um, so moving on to my second to last question. What would you like to ask the next guest on 34 Questions? If I was to ask somebody a question, I'd probably say, what can you do tomorrow? It's going to spin your life in the direction that you want it to head. What can you do tomorrow? That can spin your life. I'm just writing down. Spin your life in the, the direction. Direction you want it to head. Got you. For sure. I think uh, we sit we sit on things for too long and we're like, when I do this, it, I see it all the time. People say, oh, I want to start fighting. I want to get into fighting. I say, oh, we'll come to the gym on Monday. Oh no, I wanna I wanna get fit first, they say. I wanna get fit. Well, do you know how hard of a task it is to just go out and get fit? Like don't you think they should just come to the gym and then get fit through the process of being at the gym? For me it was like I I put off going and starting to train for years. But all it took was just that one choice on one day. And the moment I walked in the gym, I never walked out. I got gotcha. you. Do you think? Oh, go ahead. No, you you go. I was gonna say, do you think people are aware when that happens? Because, like for me, I could say the same thing. Uh, you know, I have a hard time doing it for myself. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of folks are stuck in that. I want to, uh, and or they do it right. And do you think people are aware? Cause I, I I like to think they are, and that's why I never press on it. You know, it's like, oh, you said you would. You know, I'm not that kind of person uh, just because I think they know that it's something that they said and they have intention, but just can't seem to get over that hump, that fear, uh, change, whatever it is. Uh, but yeah, do you think people are aware? Yeah, it is what they want to do in life, but it's this the tiniest little step that they need to take that they hold all this fear around. Sometimes I think we fear being the greatest version of ourselves. When yeah. I decided to quit my job and train full time, I said, I'm going to give 100% effort to this. And I put it out there to the world. I said, I'm, I told my friends and everyone that follows me on social media, I said, I'm giving it my all. I'm training full time. If I fail, you know that I was the best version of myself and I literally couldn't have done better. I think it's easier for me to sit at the pub and say, oh, I could have been a UFC fighter. I could have done this. I could have done that. But I don't want to be that person. I just want to leave it all out on the table and try to be the best version of myself and fail. And I think other people are scared to take that risk. Yeah, man. I mean, it goes a lot. There's a lot that goes into it. And if we're overthinkers, we consider ourselves overthinkers and we're doing the stuff that we love to do. So what, what would that make for all everyone else that just can't get started, you know? Um, and that's why I think a lot of us are overthinkers. Um, but I, I definitely envy the folks that can just shut their brain off and do something because like I, I tend to overanalyze everything. Um, 
But yeah. <laughs> How hard you. was it for you to start a podcast? This this was kind of hard, but I think what made it easy for me is that I failed so many times in different aspects of my life that failing at this wasn't scary. You know, it was like um I think that's another thing that plays into it. Like some folks, maybe they never failed as much as I have, uh, and they're afraid of what would happen. Uh, and because I failed a big few times in my life, I've, you know, just been like, hey, if it doesn't work out, I'm just going to move on to the next thing. And uh, so starting the podcast wasn't as bad. Um, talking to people was another thing I felt like I had to get over. Just because in the beginning, especially with strangers, it's like, you know there's all this like i don't know how this is gonna go i don't know how it's gonna flow but after doing it you know like for me my main goal was stay consistent like if it goes bad it goes well just keep interviewing people keep you know doing this because it it really like you know you see my documents it fulfills my life it feels like i'm doing something for other folks uh so that was the goal and after that like i have noticed some changes some improvements uh just little ways where I think it's gotten better for me, and that excites me. That feeds that that it feeds my energy, feeds my my motivation uh, to keep going, keep pushing. Because I can start seeing that those little improvements, man. It's pretty crazy, <laughs> uh, to be honest. But yeah, I'm sure you know the feeling as well. Two years becoming the second in your in your class. That's <laughs> that's crazy jumps too. I uh, feel you, and uh, a big thing what you said, like failing over and over again you, you stop to worry about the outcome i even noticed this after being knocked unconscious last weekend in front of the whole world i found myself in the gym yesterday and it's a big muscly weightlifting gym they're all on steroids huge guys and i usually go and do my workout over there in the corner away from everybody but i was walking around the weights gym just like I didn't know what I was doing. I was looking for some bar that I didn't even know existed. And at the time I thought, you look like such an idiot right now. But then I thought, I'd just been knocked unconscious last weekend in front of, you know, thousands of people. I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks of me anymore. Yeah. Like, <laughs> through failure, you stop caring. And it was a big thing for me to start a podcast too. What is everyone gonna think? And I'm like, no, I wanna do this for people that it does help and do it for myself and if anyone's got some negative opinion to say then like please step away from being around me because i don't need that i hear that man i hear that i think for anybody out there too it's like just be real true to yourself true to your spirit true to your reason because then if you can identify that and hold on to it then nothing anyone can say or you know maybe they're like for me you know that saying like you you are who you are when no one's watching um mm -hmm. so man like at this point i don't think too many people are watching uh but i'm just holding on to like this is who i am like i'm i'm not gonna stop regardless of whether it pops off or not um which is a crazy feeling <laughs> it's like it, it's a crazy Doing it for yourself man yeah yeah you know, if you enjoy it that's all that matters and if but people are getting something positive out of it then why wouldn't you do it Exactly. Got to share the gift, man. Got to share the gift. Uh, so before you go, I got one last question for you. The question that ties everything together. But uh, 100, 200, 300 years from now, your descendants are watching this video. What would you like to tell them? Uh, I would like to tell them that you're not... Don't be shaped into who you are by your life experiences. Allow yourself to find who you are, who your true self is, away from all the external noise and find the purest loving parts of yourself. Hold that true and pass that down to your, your kids so they can pass it down to their kids. Sure, man. Now, now they know. Now they know. Uh, any last things you'd like to add before we head out of here? Oh, just again, man, I'm just, we're blessed in the world to have people such as yourself that are trying to make a difference, get other people's voices out there so they can be heard and through the, po and through the process shed positive light. I think po 
podcasts and things like this is like therapy for some people maybe even more therapy than a psych going and seeing a psychologist because you get to see somebody else come on here and be vulnerable and talk about the hardship that they've been through and a psychologist can't provide that to people so what you're doing is therapy in my eyes and i just want to say thank you no, no doubt man thank you uh, as much as it is, it is for you, it is for me. I think that's what the, also another part that keeps me going. Um, because outside of this, man, I'm a pretty quiet person. You know, I, I, I do my job. Um, I try to stay positive, try to give that energy out. So as far as like everything I share, it's very rare. Um, and I think I needed to create a platform like this just so I can get to that level. And it, it's weird like that. I think the pressure of other people going to see this and like meeting new people it makes me just want to be as honest as, as, I, as I can be uh, and not feel like and I think what it is too is uh, maybe you do this on your podcast is that when you feel like your guest is kind of you know hesitant or nervous you you tend to overshare a little bit of yourself so then they're like oh okay they can like I can feel comfortable to do it here uh, so all the all those factors kind of mix in and it, it creates this this vibe on the show uh, but no man thank you absolutely uh, thank you i appreciate it man you're a good man likewise man likewise uh and don't let nobody else tell you different uh and li listen to the shrooms <laughs> but uh listen to the shrooms man. <laughs> listen to the shrooms and listen to 34 <laughs> appreciate it appreciate it uh so thank you jared i want to thank the folks out there if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify or watching on youtube definitely appreciate your time as well uh, remember to reach out reach forward as always much love we'll catch you guys next time on 34 questions peace peace it fades out from there man